I like the look of muscle and I feel healthier. You know, definitely I think it's more anti-aging and also to protect the joints. Being a chiropractor, I see you know a lot of patients who have hip problems and because they don't have any muscle protecting their joints. So um, just seeing that, um, uh, I know that building that muscle is just really healthy in every way, protecting the joints, for the hormones. Libido, and I feel, yeah, libido, everything. And even like my menstrual cycle is just dead on. Beforehand, it wasn't. So. Um, something was happening when I wasn't tra when I was overtraining and not lifting very heavy. So I, I just generally feel healthier in every way and strong as the new skinny. Hello and welcome back, it's Mike and Dr. Deanna. Today we're gonna to talk about muscle. We've gotten a lot of questions and comments from a lot of you, so thanks for that. A lot of you have asked about like, how can I build muscle when I'm in ketosis? Do I train differently? Do I eat differently? What about periodization? How can I slow down the aging process? And why should you build more muscle? So we're gonna tackle all these questions. Dr. Deanna and I have been lifting combined 40 plus years. You know, I started back in 98. When did you start? Oh, when I was 19, 20. Yeah. yeah, so That's for 40. quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of things change over time with, with age and hormones and all that. And we're going to talk about that. Life load, having kids and working mm -hmm. and owning your own business. And, and you're really starting the Real Food Lab side, so we can talk a little bit about Ooh. that. But <laughs> let's start with you, Dr. Deanna. You get a lot of questions from your patients and clients about muscle. Yeah. You know, some of the things <clears throat> that you've articulated to me that they're concerned about is, you know, I'm lifting, but I'm not building that muscle. Right. Or why should I build muscle? And Here's the big one I want to start with. Here's it just came to mind. It was um, I just want to be toned. Yeah. Come on, just I want to be toned. I don't want to get bulky, yeah. but I just want to get toned. I get that every day. <sighs> so what's up with that? Well, you know, yeah. What is what does that mean, really? I want to ask you that, Mike. I mean, is there such thing as just being toned? Because obviously, uh, most women they don't want to look like the typical bodybuilders, right? They well, want to look. What women do you know? That, that lift weights and look like a bodybuilder? That lift weights and look like yeah, a bodybuilder? Yeah, like, just like in models. your life. I mean, outside of fitness models yeah, and yeah. people that are probably doing drugs. So here's right. the thing. When you scroll through Instagram and you see the, I'm not, I'm not gonna mention names, mm -hmm. but when you see the person that looks super ripped and super jacked, mm -hmm. they're sponsored by a supplement company, they're on drugs. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Look, I mean, I know a lot about anabolic steroids and drugs and selective androgen receptor modulators, the mm -hmm. SARMs, they're out right now. Look, those, everyone in the fitness community that's being sponsored or paid, I would say 95% of them are on drugs, yeah. okay? Yeah. So you're not going to look like them unless you do drugs. That's right. a huge point. And there's many different body types too. You know, say Agreed. I have an easier time putting on muscle versus someone who's more ectomorph, who, you know, I have a history of sports, so I have that muscle memory, and I lift too very heavy for me you know, mm -hmm. at the gym, but, um, so can you talk to me about that? Like, how does that work? I mean, I'm let's tackle toning, then we'll talk about hypertrophy. Okay. So, so what is there such a thing as being toned? Yeah. This is a, a, I think, especially amongst women, uh, and endurance a athletes, you know, men as well, cause they don't want to put on size. You right. know what I mean? Because, uh, coming from a, I was a, you know, cat pro one, two, you know, a bike racer. And a lot of people didn't want to put on muscle because, you know, your power to rate ratio gets skewed and that becomes harder when you're climbing or racing, mm -hmm. you know, so I get it. So is there such a thing as toned muscle? I really don't think so. I think you either have hypertrophied muscle mm -hmm. and you have low body fat, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if you're looking for long, lean, toned muscle, what that really means is that you're low body fat. Mm -hmm. and your vascular and stuff like that. Now, okay. so how do you get low body fat? Well, you can do a combination of like high intensity interval training with some aerobics, mm -hmm. you know? And so your sets and reps might look a little bit different. So instead of failing at eight to 10 repetitions per set, you're failing at 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna train a different muscle type, right. you know, kind of that slow twitch muscle type, and you're gonna increase capillary density around the muscle and neuromuscular load. And so you're really gonna cause adaptations within the muscle, but you're not going to get that hypertrophy look. What about chronic cardio? So why is that a bad means of getting lean? Because, you know, over time, people just start looking skinny fat, you know, especially right. when, so. Yeah, well, because the mindset where people are like, oh, I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm going to do cardio. So then really what happens is they restrict their calories. Yeah. And that tends to burn muscle, you know, so it, it can be kind of productive long term. And mm -hmm. so we see that a lot. Uh, even dieting bodybuilders who have a high protein, you know, 300, 500, 400 grams of protein per day, right. and they're doing cardio twice a day, sometimes two hours of cardio, they're wow. losing muscle mass even when they're on anabolic steroids, mm -hmm. right? 
And so their body's in a, you know, the, it's in a favorable environment to maintain lean muscle, yet they're still losing muscle mass a little bit from the cardio. They're losing strength. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I saw this, this, you know, I talk about this a lot on the podcast, you know, when I went from like a bodybuilding routine, cause, and then I hurt my back doing deadlifts. So then I started doing, um, you know, road racing on mm -hmm. cycling because I couldn't lift, you know, because mm -hmm. my back hurt. I lost a lot of muscle very quickly and strength very quickly. And I regained that over time, you know, but so when you're doing a lot of aerobics, you burn muscle. Yeah, it's not good. You know, when I go head to the gym in the morning, I see just all the cardio equipment. It's just everyone's on cardio equipment. And honestly, they all look the same as they did two years ago. The same right. people at the gym, they haven't changed. In right. fact, they look worse. And I'm thinking, you know, if they would just get into the gym and lift weights, they would probably notice a significant difference. You know, because as we get older, we lose that muscle. We have to preserve that. Totally. So. You become more catabolic as you age. Yeah. I mean, but look, let's pause. I want to do a little sidestep. There's nothing wrong with cardio. No. In, in the sense, it's really good for your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, w when I first started really doing cardio, this is probably 2000, end of 2002, 2003. Um, my academics in school, you know, I went from like a C student mm -hmm. to the honor roll in biology and cellular molecular biology. And so why? Because really brain derived neurotrophic factor and neurogenesis really improves when you're doing aerobic training. So there's a lot of benefits to cardio from right. a mental cognitive standpoint, mm -hmm. but cut it off at 20 to 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, or and at least just keep lifting weights. Just don't just do cardio. Yeah. Right? Cardio is mean, not the foundation have to maintain your strength. Totally. Right. Yeah. yeah. And here's the thing, you talked about that. Like uh, when people go to the gym, they get in a routine of what is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like pain. Yeah. Let's face it. You know, it's like work is stressful. Life is stressful. They don't want pain. They just want to go to the gym and like just blow off some steam. But you okay. know what? If you're going to get results in your physique, you need to induce some pain. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, this may sound a little meatheadish, and I'm sorry guys, <laughs> but it's really the case. So if you want to transform your physique, it's going to make you more resilient mm -hmm. and you actually, your pain tolerance goes up because when you're lifting weights, that last rep, we're going to get into all the details, of, but that induces a lot of pain yeah. and it's challenging and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, some people that I know, and I've had this before, you probably have too, where you puke and you throw up on leg day. No, Mike, I haven't had that. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I have in a track race, but, <laughs> but I think yeah. you're saying, yeah. Right. And so that's the <laughs> level of grit that you need to cause muscle gain. It's close. <laughs> you know what I mean? That right. level of grit. So, you know, if you're struggling to put on muscle, because I get this question a lot, you know, in our first series of the weight loss masterclass, people are like, I'm doing everything, but I'm not putting on the muscle. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to just like sit down with them and say, okay, what does your exercise program look like? Yeah. Like how many sets are you going to failure or are you maxing out at 12 and you have 10 more in the tank? Yeah. What I mean by 10 more in the tank is like, you could really do 22 reps. You need to increase the weight. You know what I mean? 15, you think? Like 12 to 15? Or what do you think in like periodization? Yeah, that's really good. It depends where you are. At, you know, like for you, mm -hmm. you've been doing athletics your entire life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you could jump into like maxing out at six reps or eight reps mm -hmm. and not cause injury. But if you've been relatively sedentary, you do tennis once a week, you know, you walk the dog, you know, go to the park. I think it's good to start slow mm -hmm. because you don't want to get an injury because the fastest way to get overweight is to be hurt and sedentary, right? So you want to start slow. And I think, what does that look like? You know, kind of failing at t 12 to 15 reps. Always? Or do you switch it up to maybe like, I get this question a lot, mm -hmm. higher reps, lighter weight once in a while. Um, I mean, is it just about maintaining strength or getting stronger? Or do you have to kind of switch it up a little bit with, with how much weight you're using? Yeah, I think a 12 week periodization program is really good. You know, weeks. so we, we okay. did that back in high school football back in like 2000, 2001, you know, with the strength coach. And yeah. this has been time tested. A lot of bodybuilders do this, you know, they'll go through periodization. And so that's a really good, good point because some people just jump around and do a different, because they hear about it, keep the body guessing. So mm -hmm. they do a different mm -hmm. exercise every time they're in the gym. Right. You're not giving your body enough time to induce that adaptation. Mm -hmm. So you need at least stick to the program for six to eight weeks. What, what are the best exercises to build muscle? The, well, the compound that? movements, but let's just, okay. we'll get into all the, but I just want to do overview and get more narrow and narrow as we go on. Okay. You know what I mean? To get people more specific. So the overview here is that you need to really kind of stick with something for at least six weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same exercise. Sure. Can you vary your rest? Whatever. Yeah. Like you could rest longer or shorter, but you're going to increase your weight over time. And you're going to cause that hypertrophy, that damage, that epoch, the exercise post-oxygen debt, you know, the post-exercise oxygen debt. And what that does is really increase your fat burning after you exercise. Is there a plateau, Mike? 
You know, someone like totally. me. Totally. Like, it's not so strength and mass yeah. is not linear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. If it was linear, we would just get bigger and bigger over time. Right. You know what I mean? You and I would probably be 300 pounds of pure muscle, but that doesn't happen. It's not linear. It ebbs and flows. You get stronger and then weaker and then you kind of hurt your knee and then like, oh, you do too much yard work, so your back hurts or you pick up the kid wrong and then your elbow hurts. You know what I mean? This is real life. You know, um, this is real life. You know what I mean? You're going to get injured. You're going to not sleep well. You're going to be stressed out. So, um, so you're saying between like six to 10 reps? For a rookie novice, never been lifting or you've been very inconsistent, you're trying to change your physique and really burn fat long term, start at 12 to 15 reps. Got it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're talking, we're talking at least four days a week of training okay. or five mm -hmm. and you're going to alternate. Okay? So it would look something like this, right? You're going to do uh, legs one day, mm -hmm. you can do back the next day. You can do shoulders and then chest and biceps and arms, mm -hmm. something along those lines. There's a lot of different splits. And that's why I think it's good to read bodybuilding books. You know, I read yeah. the Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding back when I was 14 years old, 13 years old actually. Uh, Muscular Development was a great book that they have a lot of different tips on how to do workout programs and structure them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's good. So starting out with, with hitting every body part at least once a week. At least once a week, okay. And uh, when you're, for your rookie, 12 to 15 reps, at least three to four sets per major body part. So at 12 weeks, would I do the same exercises and then just increase my weight? Well, you can do a couple different things. So you can do a deload, mm -hmm. like two weeks of deload. Mm -hmm. um, you can do some more like CrossFit style exercise. So CrossFit, you know, is basically like more of an, an endurance format of mm -hmm. resistance training. Mm -hmm. So instead of squatting and feeling at eight repetitions, you might do like 20 repetitions of the squat. You know okay. what I mean? So you're, you're working a different part of your engine. So I think that's why CrossFit is good if you don't have any lingering issues. Uh, injuries like low sure. back, hip, knee, mm -hmm. uh, bicep. That's why I personally can't do, I do CrossFit style lift, like Olympic lifting, mm -hmm. squatting and deadlifting, and I think that's good for a lot of people. Um, but cleaning and some of the like real jerky movements, because it's really explosive with a lot of time under tension, a lot of repetitions, mm -hmm. that leads to injury. So Dilo, need to explain that for you know our viewers? So you don't know kind of a rest week, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so it's good to plan this out initially, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And there's a lot of psychological reasons for this progress this this notion that when you get when you pro, when you achieve a goal other things in your life are seemingly more achievable mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's why i love weight training like you mentioned the people at the gym that you see on the same treadmill the same elliptical machine that have been there for years their body doesn't change and they might gain weight exactly like you said why i mean how many different ways can you progress on an elliptical right. i mean literally the thing only goes so fast yeah. when you go too fast i mean i've done sprints on an ellipt it starts shaking <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so you like that's why lifting weights is really good because one time you're bench pressing 135 pounds that would be 245 pound plates mm -hmm. then you add on 10 more pounds the next week then you know the next thing you know you're lifting 225. okay you know so you're like yeah. dude if i can tackle this in the gym mm -hmm. why can't i double the sales of my business right. why can't i get the courage to introduce myself to the, the, you know, this networking group or do, you know, Toastmasters and get up and, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So progress is a huge motivator, um, you know, for like congruency and consistency in our life. And so that's why I love weight training. I mean, you know, I think both of us have, have garnered a lot of self-confidence and personal development through the gym. Yeah. And how long would you say? I mean, for me, I, I generally am there for about an hour and I, I'm done in about an hour. Is that too long or is that, is that okay? It really depends like on yeah. your rest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like you meant, I, we kind of sidestepped away from like really finishing up on periodization. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going for hypertrophy, so you want to, again, you're looking for a toned look, but again, to get that toned look, you need to build the base of muscle first, right? right? So to build muscle, you, need, you might need longer rest periods. Okay. Yeah. So this can be 60 to 90 seconds. Okay. Uh, some bodybuilders wait three minutes in between. Wow. You know what I mean? So if you're... And that can literally be the amount of time you need to fully kind of recover, mm -hmm. replenish a little bit of glycogen, get rid of lactic acid, mm -hmm. get your breath back, get some water. I mean, we're talking like you're lifting very heavy and very hard. This would be more for advanced people. Right. But if you're just starting out, 60 to 90 seconds is good. So again, going back to your question about training time, you know, like is 45 minutes too long? Is an hour too long? You know, when you, after having Nez, like mm -hmm. let's share your personal story, you know, you were, you weren't working at the time because we had just moved to Seattle. Right. So you, you know, your job was being a mommy and put a kid in daycare. You wanted a little break and you were training a lot. Was, what happened to your, your physique at that point? Um, you know, well, in the first year, it's hard to tell because I had all that hormone in me, but I was really just, 
um, I was lifting, but I think I was doing more cardio and not a lot. Like my, my abs, it, they took about a year because I, I know I wasn't lifting very heavy. Mm. Um, and my nutrition was probably off as well. So, um, yeah, I was probably overtraining, too much cardio, um, not, not heavy enough weight. So it took a while for me to feel like I got my, my body back. Mm. That makes sense? Like probably over a year when I know, looking back, that if I would have just focused on getting that muscle back, because while I was pregnant, I really couldn't lift heavy. I, I, I lifted throughout my pregnancy, but it was just kind of to maintain the muscle, mm -hmm. just to be safe. I probably would have had much quicker results if I would have just hammered into the weights safely mm -hmm. and cut on the cardio. I did more um, hit training with, with the cardio, so. Yeah, so some people would say that you look toned. Because you were pretty yeah. lean, you didn't have a lot of, like you have way more muscle now. And yeah. not that you've gained a lot of weight, mm -hmm. but I think that muscle just, I mean, in my opinion, and I think a lot of men and women would say this too, because you mm -hmm. get a lot of comments, is just have a better look now. I'm just more curvy in the right way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, definitely, you know, I feel more confident. I like the look of muscle and I feel healthier. You know, definitely I think it's more anti-aging and also to protect the joints. Being a chiropractor, I see you know, a lot of patients who have hip problems and because they don't have any muscle protecting their joints. So mm -hmm. um, just seeing that, um, uh, I know that building that muscle is just really healthy in every way, protecting the joints, for the hormones. Libido. And hormone I feel, yeah, libido, uh, everything. And even like my menstrual cycle is just dead on. Beforehand, it wasn't. So. Um, something was happening when I wasn't tra when I was overtraining and not lifting very heavy. So I, I just generally feel healthier in every way and strong as the new skinny guys. It really mm. is. You know, it's 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 more attractive. I think viewed by most than and even a lot of the models out there on the magazines. They're they're displaying a lot of like more of the muscle because skinny's out. Mm -hmm. Skinny's unhealthy. It's not attractive. Yeah, it's definitely old school. It's old school. So to summarize like how I interpreted what you were doing, I knew you were overtrained, but you didn't listen to me. Right. Um, and I'm not like being condescending at all. I'm just saying it how it is, right? And I was always like, Danny, you gotta lift, you gotta lift. Yeah. But you had this little person on the back of your head or on your shoulder, your subconscious said, no, 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 I don't wanna look too big and bulky, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people unfortunately still have that because they were taught that like lifting weights is for men, but it's for women, it's for elderly people, it's for young people. Right. You know, we have our four-year-old teaching her how to do pull-ups and, and right. sitting there and hanging, you know, on, the, on our pull-up bar in a garage right. uh, for 15 seconds, you know, so she, she can develop that arm strength. Right. I don't think there's an age that's too young. I mean, yeah, maybe one years old obviously is too young. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our ancestors were moving, lifting stuff, gardening, mm -hmm. hunting, and so we need to be doing that too. You no, know, no, and I've always, I always loved muscle. I don't think that I was afraid of getting necessarily bulky, although getting pregnant, women, you know this, it messes with you, especially if you've been small your whole life and suddenly you're huge and you give birth and there you just have this flappy stomach. You're like, what the heck am I supposed to do now? So, yeah, it kind of plays around with your mind a bit. Um, but then I had, I had basically like two hours in a day to pick and choose what I wanted to do for a workout while my daughter was in, was in daycare. So naturally most people, and I got caught up into this, focus on more of the cardio. Well, I've got, you know, two hours, by the time I hit the cardio, I get an hour of cardio in and maybe just like 20 minutes of lifting. But looking back, I really should have just focused more of that time and chose the weightlifting and then the cardio as the icing on the cake. Cause cardio is important. I do love cardio. I get up, it's my morning routine. Uh, every morning I go for, you know, a, a walk and some sprints and it makes me feel good. Uh, does it change my body? probably not as much as, as lifting the weights does. The lifting mm -hmm. sculpts me, and um, I definitely am more vascular and leaner the heavier that I lift. I know this for a fact. I've played around with it. And, and your abs come in more. My abs come in more, and I've done everything. I've done you know the, the classes where I'm lifting light weights, um, you know, kickboxing classes, you name it. And I was just killing myself for like with 90 all minutes, all the bands, nothing, nothing DVDs. would change. And I have a ton of women ask me, you know, they say to me, they come in the office, I do some nutritional consults and they say, Deanna, like I am doing everything I did 10 years ago and my body, not only is it not changing, but I'm getting like a stomach, I'm getting a pouch. And I'm like, I've been there, I've been there, lift heavy. And I don't filter, I'm so unfiltered. I'm like, look, get back into the gym, get with a trainer, 
and have them teach you a good trainer just get back to the basics with like the, the bench presses and the squats and the mm. deadlifts and very safely again meet with a trainer so that you're doing you have the right form you may need to start with body weight exercises which we show in our course which mm, is totally. really important just for stability because you don't want to get injured but your goal ultimately is to be able to do those basic movements and to get stronger and that's what's going to take off the fat that's what's going to get you lean and change your body and there's just no excuses we all have it in us you know and yeah we all have different body types but still i mean you can be your best you so we're just helping you be your best you yeah and again so that that mindset you're going to get big and bulky just delete that from your brain it doesn't get exist out. get it out it it's over exist. it's done Okay, we're not you don't have talk to spend hours of cardio and hours you don't have to work out all day to have a great body no really i mean if you're not being paid to work out all day then why would you work out right. all day that's the beauty of doing this weight training like we're talking about so yeah. pull-ups push-ups military presses overhead presses mm -hmm. squats deadlifts you know it's not going in there and doing a bunch of bicep curls right i mean i you know i haven't talked about this that much i mean i haven't done biceps for a year and a half. Yeah. You know, I, what? How do you train biceps? Is by doing pull-ups and deadlifts <laughs> and things like that. You know. Right. And so you, so don't go in there and do these accessories. Yeah. Accessories are just that. They're like dietary supplements. I love supplements, mm -hmm. but the core is real food. Mm -hmm. The core of your workout training program is squats, deadlifts, military presses, pull-ups. You know, that's the core. And the accessories, like when you have time. Right. You know, like if you're not rushed and whatever, you finish everything out, and you're like, okay, I have a little bit more in the tank. Right. I'm gonna do some accessory work. And do the glute stuff. That's a great accessory because they're large muscles. They're huge muscles. Yeah, that's a good but, one. But Deanna, I want to I want to finish this off a little bit. Yeah. So just to summarize, when you were doing a lot of cardio, you were doing a lot of booty bar and stuff, and all that's good. You know, it's really good to get people moving. I'm not trashing any of that. We both yeah, felt like, that burn. I felt that burn. We like yoga too. Yoga's great too. It's definitely not enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, not, um, it's great though. It's but you enough. looked flat. Yeah. You kind of let's be honest, lacked a little resilience. Yeah. I mean, look at you now. You're you're developing this business real food lab mm -hmm. you're going out there cold calling getting new customers and stuff i mean mm -hmm. three or four years ago when you're doing all this cardio you would have never been able to do that i was tired you were tired i and was fatigued. free and tired you know just like anyone else i was just i was exhausted by the end of the day and you yeah you're dead on i have so much more energy now i'm on my way to 41 and i feel better than I have in years. Mm -hmm. And I really attribute that to the proper training and the proper nutrition. It is everything, you know, food is medicine and also weight training is medicine too. So it is a combination. So we definitely have to, you know, in our e-course we talk about, you know, how to eat correctly. And we talk about, you know, keto, keto adaptation and why keto could be uh, great for you if you're trying to burn fat and maintain your muscle. So um, it's really exciting stuff. It's new age stuff. Yeah, and so again, the resilience garnered from resistance training, you know, carries over to so many aspects of your life. So, mm -hmm. so that's, I guess, the main driver here. It's not like who cares really what you look like. It's like how much confidence you have. We know some people that are missing legs or have been mm -hmm. war victims and stuff like that, and they just have this confidence and this charisma. And a lot of that can be garnered through like the progress you get in the gym. And so oh, that's yeah. why I'm excited yeah. about it. Yeah, because when you feel your best you, everything works out. Everything kind of falls into place. It's about being balanced, okay? And the two major components of being balanced, honestly, I think in both, we, we both agree with this, is diet and the proper training. But there also is sleep mm -hmm. and managing your stress. There are, there are two other huge components, so we definitely need to talk about that, and we do in our course on how to do that. So um, let's talk about anti-aging and muscle because I get that a lot, especially from women. Um, how does it help you age gracefully? Yeah, it's a super yeah. important question and it mm -hmm. kind of goes back to like what we were talking about earlier with your training program and how you're doing a lot of cardio and these booty bar things. Yeah. You know, you really weren't engaging a lot of muscle groups at once in yeah. this neural load. Neural load, this neurological load that comes through squatting and deadlifting and, and really activating those muscles and yeah. causing that damage, what the body's trying to do is recover and mm -hmm. repair. And so it raises androgenic hormones, you know, things like testosterone, things like growth hormone. And these are the hormones that are involved with, you know, the fountain of youth, you know, and, and they're the kind of the, a lot of bioidentical hormone doctors are recommending testosterone for women, you know, for libido oh. issues, mm -hmm. for l preventing muscle atrophy and sarcopenia and so forth. And obviously we know that low T, low testosterone in men is a huge phenomenon. It's an mm -hmm. epidemic at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, so many uh, men in their 20s and 30s, you know, are now have low sperm counts and low testosterone. So again, how does weight training do that? What's well, a combination of that neural load and just activating a lot of muscles at once yeah. stimulate those um, 
you know, androgenic hormones, which are really good. So like challenging weight we're talking because a lot of classes, they do engage a lot of the muscles and if you're dead tired after and yeah, you feel the burn and you sure got the hip flexor nice and tight, but really, what does it do? Does that mean that you're building muscle just because you're burning? Yeah, so it's not the burn, the burn, it's the load. It's the you load. have to get the load going. And so that's, I mean, how many people th do you know that have done P90X and they lose a little weight, but then they go back and forth, they go back and forth, you know? Yeah. And again, I think it comes back to there's no objective marker that you're really improving. Mm -hmm. What do you do, P90X faster? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, is your heart rate lower when you're doing P90X or something? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be facetious, I'm being realistic. And that's why strength training is so good because you see the weight increasing. Right. And so you're like, okay, I am a weightlifter. You, right. you know, when you identify with being a part of a group, you right. behave like group members within that group are supposed to behave. Right. So you eat higher protein. You know, you yeah. cut, you lower your carbs. Mm -hmm. You go to sleep. Or, I mean, here's what's interesting about this. Like when I was working on the book, Belly Fat Effect, I wasn't lifting as much weight because I was um, busy. You know, I was sitting a lot, so my back was hurting me more, so I wasn't squatting and deadlifting. Right. So. I would have two to three glasses of wine. Like I would go to bed at two in the morning and I didn't really care because I'm like, you know what? I'm not lifting anyway. So I don't, I'm, I'm not going to get sick. I'm not like over exerting myself. It you was know? like the shining guys, just an FYI. You know what I mean? But if you're <laughs> lifting weights, so check it out. If you're lifting weights, you want to go to bed earlier. Right. So it's this habit, this keystone habit that forces you to consume less alcohol mm -hmm. that, that causes you to go to bed because let's face it by 10 o'clock, if you're lifting hard, you're tired, man. You mm -hmm. can't stay up to 1130 watching TV or Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Right. You need that sleep. And if you don't get the sleep, you're going to be wiped out the next day. Mm -hmm. So then the next night, you're definitely going to get the sleep. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that's so important. Is Adaptation. It's a keystone. Too. Yeah. Adaptation is huge. You talk about that a lot, not only with weight training, but with, you know, nutrition, mm -hmm. right? So I think that um, that's really important to me because we get caught up in these, you know, certain ways to train and our groundhog day, certain ways to eat when honestly, like some people that you see who are, who have more diversity, who eat healthy, but have more diversity as well as like in their training yeah. look better and they're not as like focused on doing everything perfectly. So mm -hmm. that's something we definitely, you know, need to talk about. Yeah. Let's kind of finish up the hormones thing though. I think you and I both have experienced this independently, you know, when you're lifting like that, I mean, who knows? There's multiple mechanisms. You know, we could articulate all this, you know, the, you know, the androgens that are increased and stuff. But the bottom line is like, when you're strength training heavy, your hormones can become rebalanced. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I get this question too a lot. Like, well, what if I have thyroid dysfunction? What if I have adrenal fatigue? Mm -hmm. Weight training is probably the best thing that you can do if you oh. have adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Cardio is not. What is cardio mimicking? The fight or flight response. Cortisol, noradrenaline, and, and norepinephrine are going to increase when you're doing chronic cardio. Right. I mean, Hello, I used to do that and I was more adrenal fatigued and tired. I mean, because I was biking sometimes six hours a day. Yeah. You know, training with professionals, racing with professionals in Boulder, Colorado, like wanting to be Lance Armstrong and racing the Tour de France. And like, I was the most tired and sick that I've ever been in my entire life. Our bodies are smarter than we are innately. You have to think that way. Is that, mm -hmm. what does your body think of when you're running for an hour? Or biking for two hours. Running away from a saber tooth tiger. Right. right. It's thinking cortisol, it's going to jack up. So no wonder you have a, you know, a juicy tummy after doing all that because naturally your body wants to preserve what it can because it thinks something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's not natural for us to be doing those types of things for long periods of time, like steady state, right? Not to say that, you know, if you're training for a marathon, it's wonderful. If it makes you happy, great, but you just have to be aware that it's more of a performance thing than it is like, don't do it for looks because it's probably not the best way to go about having like you're the best, the body of your dreams. But if you're doing it for like competition, would you agree? I go for it. It's wonderful, but you might have some hormonal problems afterwards. Yeah. If it's your life goal to do a marathon or to do an Ironman, then cool. Knock yeah. yourself out. But there will be consequences. And mm -hmm. I get emails from doctors that are like, dude, I'm getting weight and I'm like training. I noticed this too when I was biking, you know, uh, competitively, some of the people that I would train with, they had a lot of belly fat and like back, wow. fat on the back of their legs and stuff. Really? You know, I kind of buffered that a little bit. I mitigated that by always strength training. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still got really skinny and lethargic and had adrenal issues and all that. And then, you know, we'll wrap up the anti-aging thing. I felt like I aged faster during those years in my twenties. 
for sure. So like, you know, uh, wrinkles on your forehead, lines like that. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I did my telomere test. This is really interesting. You'll find this really interesting. So telomeres are the protective caps on our chromosomes. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of keep DNA tight and stable and protect it from ultraviolet radiation from the sun and x-rays and free radical stressors, right? So you want more active telomerase. That's the enzyme that repairs the telomeres and you want longer telomeres. Well, I did my telomere test. This was 2008 and it showed that I was 45 years old biologically. Really? This was when I was training a lot. Oh my so, god! So I took that and I didn't really. I was like, oh, whatever. That test sucks, you know. The, because it was a Western blot and there's this fish method that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, oh, it's probably just a Western blot is inaccurate. But I was being biased and not looking at my real lifestyle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So because people get psychologically addicted to endurance work, there's mm -hmm. endorphins that are released. Yeah. But let me just tell you guys, if you've been doing endurance training for a while. This, those same endorphins, once you start lifting heavy, you get those same endorphins and you actually feel pretty good after you exercise as well. Right. You know what I mean? So that same high that you get from a runner's high, you get that if you're lifting heavy. Mm -hmm. But if you just lift periodically, you're not going to get that because you're not going to really like engage as many muscles. Right. So again, going back to libido, you know, when you're training like that, doing a lot of cardio like you were, I was, it, you know, your libido takes a big nosedive. Yeah, it really does. So. Sadly. If, okay, going back to the questions that we get a lot. If your adrenal fatigue, shoot, what should you do? Lift weights. Okay, that's the best thing you can do for your adrenals. Why? Because it's short term and it's going to boost all, it's going to re-synchronize, I really believe this, your whole hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis that becomes dysfunctional mm -hmm. in adrenal fatigue is going to become resynchronized. Again, why is that? Because you're going to be tired, dead tired by 10 o'clock at night, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you're going to be getting your sleep, you're going to be boosting growth hormone and, and resyncing your circadian rhythm. And burning fat throughout the night too, the more muscle you have. Totally. Oh yeah, that's key. Well, that's the thing. So when you do cardio training, mm -hmm. like you're burning fat while you're training, but then it kind of stops over time. Right. When you're weightlifting, you're not burning fat while you're exercising, you're burning glycogen and glucose. Mm -hmm. But when you're done, you're, this is what's really interesting, this glycogen sparing effect. So check it out. And we're gonna finish up on, on thyroid hormones afterwards. But mm -hmm. when you're doing weight training, you cause oxygen debt and you, you deplete your muscle glycogen. Mm -hmm. So the body's like, okay, we're gonna, while we're repairing glycogen, we're gonna burn fat for energy. Mm -hmm. So you, your fat burning continues to climb up after you do weight training. Whereas if you're doing just cardio, yeah, you're gonna get a little bump in your resting metabolic rate. You're gonna burn a little fat, but not nearly as much as if you do weight training. Right. So that's why if you look at a sprinter versus a marathon runner, you know, and you look at their fatty acid oxidation while they're exercising, you know, really, uh, um, I think weight trainers burn a lot more fat, and particularly car, uh, keto adapted. Keto adapted, yeah, the key. Huge amount of fat burning. And what's uh, the best time of day to weight train? Is there? Let's just finish that off. One thing though, if you have thyroid dysfunction, mm -hmm. ha people ask this all the time. I have Hashimoto's. I don't think I should do weight training. Yes, mm -hmm. you should. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the more muscle mass you have, the more leptin sensitive you are. Because mm -hmm. leptin receptors are found within muscle tissue. So there's, you know, unfortunately, thyroid disease and thyroid dysfunction is so pervasive and prevalent amongst women nowadays for a variety of reasons. But when you become more leptin sensitive, you take the immunological load off the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So it's way better, in my opinion, than, yeah. than doing cardio. So even if you're fatigued, you don't have a thyroid, you're on Synthroid, Westroid, Armor, whatever it is, you know, weight training is gonna be really, really good for you. Why? You're gonna increase those leptin receptors within your muscle tissue. That's going to decrease your level of inflammation. That's mm -hmm. gonna take the load off your thyroid, wow. which is really good. Yeah. Okay. Um, time of day. Time of day. When should we weight train? Is there a better time? I mean, obviously, you know, based on our busy schedules, some people don't have that mm -hmm. flexibility, know, the flexibility or the option. They yeah. have to train in the morning. I have to train in the morning, but it's whatever works yeah. for you. Okay. That's the thing. It's like, what's the best time to take your multivitamin yeah. when you remember? <clears throat> yeah. That's the best time. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, when should I check my finances? When do you remember? Just make it a routine and a habit. That's the thing. Is like, just pick a time and stick with it. Right. You know? Between um, 8 and 10 p.m. <laughs> no, I mean... So you don't want to do it at 3 in the morning, okay? If you're, you're looking at for optimal, for it's between 4 and 6 p.m. So really? we talk about this a lot in the weight loss masterclass on yeah. uh, some of the bonus videos that I made is, you know, okay, so your level of catabolism mm -hmm. is lowest and the neurological energy, the amount of like muscles that you can recruit via your nervous system while you're training is highest between 4 and 6 p.m. So 
Even if you're tired, like after a long day of work, well, you still get the same Well, that's effect. the thing. So yeah. for some people, they're just wiped out. You yeah. know, maybe they're on their feet all day. You know, maybe you're working at a daycare and you're chasing kids around or you're a chiropractor or you're a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Then for someone like you, you might be better off first thing in the morning. Definitely. Yeah. I get a little bit tired by the end of the day. Totally. You know? Yeah. I prefer and the then you can have a crappy workout or if you're tired and you're working out, then you take caffeine that affects your sleep. Right. So yeah. you, here's the thing. It's like, it's, it's like, what's the right diet? Mm -hmm. How many MCT, how many grams or milligrams of MCT oil should you have per day? How much fat should you have? It totally depends. That's the thing. Like there's no rule. Like what works for the fitness models is different from what works for us. It's different from works, what works for you. And that can change over time totally. too. That's the art of it. It's really an art. You have to just learn how to be in tune with your body and know certain things like when am I overtraining? What is true hunger? You have to get to know you. And I think the best ways to do that are obviously getting enough sleep so you can think mm -hmm. and uh, such things as like meditation and just heart math, heart math and just living presently um, because I think you can make better decisions generally. Yeah, totally. So. And you know, a great way to assess overtraining is like if you're plateauing, if you're not getting the results you used to get, yeah. or you're feeling really lethargic or tired, and then one of the favorite tools that I like is the HRV4 training Love app. That. Yeah. I'll, I'll put the link below this video with That's Marco Altini, and mm -hmm. he's a creator of that app. So it's a first morning parasympathetic you know, check-in, really, and so it looks at your heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. And that's been spot on for me for quite yeah, a while. Me you know, too. it's pretty, it's accurate. It's really cool. So yeah. again, all these little tools may seem like, oh my gosh, that's another thing I have to worry about or think about. They become a habit and it's like automated in your life once you start doing it on a regular basis. Yeah. And you want to do it because you want to get better at the gym. You want to keep your hormones balanced. You want to, like we talked about earlier, like slowing down the mm -hmm. aging process. You know, one of the hallmarkers of low aging or, or sorry, accelerated aging is low muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So you want to slow down the, the aging process, maintain your muscle over time. So sarcopenia, the loss of muscle, that's the medical jargon for low muscle mass with, with elderly age, you know, is is very devastating. You, you think about people that you hear about like someone's grandfather or grandmother fall and breaking a hip mm -hmm. and then they pass away six months later. You know why? Because they get chronically inflamed, chronic infection, they're sitting around. Um, and so th humans are meant to move. Do you know the statistics on the rate at which muscle does decrease as we get older, say in like the 40s and 50s? And, and it, is it the same for men and women? Yeah, it does um, vary a little bit for men and women. And I think it's like 1% per year or something like that. But look, there's a lot of people like you can maintain that or offset that. So this is like a biohack or a way to optimize your aging process is mm -hmm. through resistance training yeah. because you can keep those hormones elevated. So resistance train. Yeah. This is, this is the point. Take home point. Totally. Get the, the gym. Just do it. Even if you know, you're know you 40 years old and you've never picked up weight in your life, it's time now. Sign up with a personal trainer and just do it because it will not only save your life, you know, it's, it's just anti-aging. Right. So. And a great way to offset blood sugar rise and this notion of inflammaging, that we get more inflamed as we age. It's kind of, I didn't make that word up. You can go into PubMed, guys, and go to Google it. Scholar. <laughs> inflammaging. So literally, the longer you're on this earth, the more inflamed you're going to be. Yeah. Now, how can we offset that? By maintaining more lean muscle mass. Because muscle releases myokines. These are signaling uh, molecules that actually uh, modulate the immune system in a be uh, beneficial way. Mm -hmm. so, and it helps, to, you know, muscles of leptin and insulin sponge and glucose sponge, really. I mean, if you were to have a Gatorade, again, we have never, I haven't had a Gatorade for probably 20 years, but if you were to have one, Deanna, about 80% of the glucose from that Gatorade, mm -hmm. guess where it would go? I don't muscle. Know. In the That's muscle. where it goes. It's scary. It's, yeah, it's amazing. So a lot of our, our glucose and our glycogen, glycogen mm -hmm. is stored glucose, you know, from blood sugar, mm -hmm. it goes into muscle tissue. Right. Okay, so if you didn't have that muscle tissue, where would that glucose go? Into it would, fat? It would get converted. Into fat. Via lipo, you know, lipogenic pathways to make fat. Right. So it, it would deposit still in your muscle tissue, but it would, it, it would cause damage. And would form ceramides and intramyocellular lipid deposition, which would cause dysfunctional muscle and all that. So Ooh. the bottom line is you want to maintain that muscle by moving it around and all that. And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the best way to slow down the aging process is by by moving muscle. And I want to finish off with one one point. You asked about like does anabolism slow down with age? And yes, it does mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's the important point of having post-workout amino acids and protein. Right. 
whether it's from real food, whether it's from supplements, you know, uh, real food's always better, but I, I love Zymogen Zymobolics. It's a great amino acid formula with arginine and histidine. I love having that intra workout and post workout. Yeah. So that's a nice way to keep that mTOR, this driver of muscle protein synthesis, activated. And the cool thing about being keto adapted, you know, we'll kind of transition a little bit for like meal timing and stuff with keto adaptation, is your muscle protein synthesis is higher. Mm. That's really interesting, you know, when you're keto adapted, you actually burn more fat for fuel and you actually, your MPS level, your muscle protein synthesis is higher. Because it increases leucine, correct? In the blood, yeah, I think right. that's one of the mechanisms. There are other yeah. mechanisms too, like it reduces the inflammatory response, it mm -hmm. makes you more insulin sensitive. So when you're insulin sensitive, you can drive more amino acids and glucose into muscle tissue in a post-workout window, mm. which is really cool mm -hmm. because insulin is great post-workout. You yeah. know, it's a very anabolic, it's a key signaling molecule. So there's a lot of benefits there. So, so again, the, the slowing down the aging process, or you know, does your level of recovery change with age? Yeah, but who cares? Just lift anyway. Right. I mean, don't be. Oh, I'm not going to lift because like my amino acid, you know, my muscle protein synthesis declines with age. That's a bad mindset. Mm -hmm. That's like saying, oh, I can't make money, you know, or buy the house of my dreams because I'm over 50. Just sleep. And eat well. <laughs> well that's, but um, so we're going to finish off now and talk a little bit about you know building muscle while you're in ketosis, and this is a really uh, this takes a lot of tinkering and testing because when you start keto adapting, you start to lose, I think you lose water retention, you yeah. know, because you're not eating those carbohydrates. And so the pers you kind of feel like, man, I'm getting skinny. Like, mm -hmm. what is going on? But I think stick with it because things do improve over time. Yeah. And um, adding some salt in there too helps. Salt yeah. helps. Yeah. And then one of the things that I get asked a lot about is like, well, I'm losing weight too quickly when I'm in, when I'm in a ketogenic state mm -hmm. and so what do you do well eat more calories yeah you know that's like how many meals a day though okay so we can't we don't graze when you're keto so let's just right. talk about this this is huge on you lifting know. days i think three three meals a day and okay. this is for me it's totally different right yeah. like there's other do? people dominic agosino eats one meal a day like people are different yeah. on lifting days especially if i'm doing back or, or legs where there's a lot of muscle groups involved i like to have three meals a day because mm -hmm. i feel like my recovery is good my hrv the next morning is good my breath acetone is fine um and i don't feel like emaciated and skinny when we're doing intermittent fasting and that's when you like you lose muscle and you feel yeah. tired and weak and you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm who cares if I'm in ketosis all the time? I don't have cancer, you know, thank goodness, you know, so it's not, or I don't have epilepsy, so I don't need to be in ketosis every minute of the day. You kind of be in and out of ketosis. Yeah. It's fine. So um, generally, I know you don't count your calories. <laughs> well, you can't count calories. Count how much you're exercising. Focus on that. Okay. Focus on the words that you're saying to yourself while you're, you know, your positive self-talk. Don't count calories. Don't count calories. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, get rid of the scale. Don't count calories. Don't Count check, your macros. Check your blood sugar right. and check your breath acetone. Okay, perfect. So if your blood sugar is spiking, your breath acetone is low, you're not in ketosis, you're balancing blood sugar, then change what you're eating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I think you should track and count. And you know what? I did track my macros. I know we did a podcast a couple weeks ago and I was telling everybody that I track my macros, not because I wanted to become very obsessive, because I just wanted to know generally um, how much fat I was eating and carbohydrates and protein. So, but I don't do that anymore because I find that gets super obsessive and it does mm -hmm. affect the gut microbiome because I was finding I was shifting things out of my nutrition, such as like onions and really important things for the gut. So, you know, you might need those things to measure in the beginning, but you'll get a pretty good idea eventually, you know, what you eat and so forth. So it's just getting down to eating real food, getting rid of the processed crap and, mm -hmm you know, not eating a ton of carbohydrates. Just the good carbs when you do, slow carbs and no carbs. Yeah, and instead of counting your calories, what you can do is just get one of those cheap composition notebooks, you know, at Walgreens or Rite Aid or whatever, yeah. and write down what you're eating, mm -hmm. and then compare your blood glucose and your acetone and your strength and your how you feel, and really just go like, how are your pants feeling? If your pants are really tight and you're, you know, you look in the mirror and you, you know. Like in the waistline, because you might waistline. build some muscle in your legs, which is okay. But, yeah, yeah, then yeah. then change things around a little bit, mm -hmm. like decrease a meal, you know, or cut down on. So a lot of people think like, oh, I'm, I'm ketogenic, so I need to have a lot of cheese, I need to have a lot of fat, a lot of bacon. That's you know, like yeah, that's more Atkins style. Yeah, like modern day ketogenic is, is not Atkins, mm -hmm. you know, and so you need to have those flavonoids and those phytonutrients and microbiome boosting compounds and healthy fats. You know, it's not just about total quantity, mm -hmm. you know, and. 
so that that's the thing and so when people start lifting they notice that you know you, those foods become more and more important the healthier foods because you want performance you know this isn't just about maintaining high blood ketones like that's cool that's one attribute but that's really myopic you know we want to look right. at the whole picture and just keeping those veggies up that's important totally variety of vegetables you know uh, bitter greens mm -hmm. you know that's just the, that should be I think the main part of the diet even if you're ketogenic yeah, so let's kind of finish this discussion up with pre and post workout. Um, a lot of people that listen to, our, listen to our podcast are keto adapted, they're doing a ketogenic or low carb diet. Uh, one thing that I found is having a later lunch is beneficial, you mm -hmm. know, so having lunch around two, having a lot of fat so that when I train at like 4.30 or 5 or even sometimes 5.30, you know, I don't have to have another meal beforehand right. and I feel a lot of energy that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, and then post workout, you know, you definitely want to get some, some nutrients in there. I know there's this some people promoting like, oh no, no, you don't eat after you exercise. I've done that, you get weak. Yeah. I mean, let's just be real, like, you yeah, if you're doing P90X and all these like in, yeah. insanity programs, fine, do whatever you want after you exercise, but if you're lifting weights, you wanna recover, yeah. right? You wanna get amino acids in there so that you, like, you can recover properly, mm -hmm. and I found real food and protein shakes, whey protein, and Zymogen Zymabolics, which is a really cool amino acid product we'll talk about later. Um, that optimizes my recovery, but what about you? I think the same thing for me. I've been doing the Zymabolics during the workout and yeah. I've really noticed a difference and it tastes really good. Um, but I think post-workout, I try to do the, the one scoop of protein, about 20 to 25 grams of protein uh, in the form of whey or beef protein. And um, I'll do that within the first 30 minutes and then, uh, you know, I'm pretty hungry after I lift. So yeah. I think like even an hour later, I'm not timing it by any means, but I'm really kind of thinking about what real food I'm gonna ingest. And um, that's when I'm usually eating like the sweet potatoes and the animal meat and um, just a really good substantial meal. And then, um, at, and it's just based on my schedule because I lift around like 11 o'clock. So I'm eating lunch about 1, 1 1.30, which is good mm. for me. So um, dinner is generally a, a lot smaller, just something to kind of get me by. Some fresh greens from our garden, a little extra virgin olive oil or one of our homemade dressings, which we have in some of the videos. Mm. But um, I think, yeah, my main focus is generally about one to two hours after I, I lift weights. So that's on like lifting days. And on the days that I'm not lifting, I'm just really focusing on a lot of dark leafy greens, good variety, good fats, moderate protein, you know, not, nothing obsessive, just trying to make sure I'm getting enough of everything in yeah. nutrition. You mentioned sweet potatoes and stuff like that after mm -hmm. workout, and I got this question a lot, like, you know, so where does MCT oil come into the equation? So, you know, for you, for example, like, you don't really care about always being in ketosis because you're maintaining physique, you're just like overall health, right? right. Uh, generally low carb. Mm -hmm. But for someone that wants to maintain high levels of blood ketones and also wants to replenish glycogen a little bit, have some carbs in there mm -hmm. on the carb cycling days, throwing in some MCT oil is really good so that you can like have your cake and eat it too. Sure. You know what I mean? So even though you're having the carbs, it's, it, if you have MCT oil with it, it won't kick you out of ketosis, which is pretty cool. Oh, with the carbs? Yeah. That is so interesting. And so it's, I've been doing that like post-workout shakes and stuff like that too, experimenting. And so it's a way to stay in ketosis while you're having carbs. It's kind of unique. So. Oh, I thought we weren't supposed to have fat post-workout immediately because it stopped the absorption of, of protein. There is synthesis. there is some uh, discrepancy there and stuff like that, but it, I mean, if you're trying to maintain high levels of blood ketones, like you do need fats, right? Okay. With the meal, this is good to know. Yeah. So yeah, so the mm -hmm. so the MCTs can be used like in a mm -hmm. protein shake, and that's what's kind of cool. So you can have the best of both worlds. So, so you can get all the amino acids and a little bit of the fast-acting carbs to help to replenish glycogen, but then you can maintain. It's not going to kick you out of ketosis with the MCTs. Would you say that your breakfast in the morning is pretty high fat? It totally person. depends, you know, yeah. like how how hungry I am, like how you know intense the training was the mm -hmm. day before. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. There's no rule, and there's no like I do this, so you should do it. But yeah. like some days, you know, we I wake up and I'm just not hungry. Yeah. So we just wait till I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. I know for some people, like wait, no, 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 tell me what to do. That's what you do. Listen to your body. Listen to your and body. And this is where meditation and heart math comes in because there's no rule. Just because a guru does it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Doesn't mean it's going to work for me. So when, some days when I wake up, I'm like, oh my gosh, like t generally after back day and leg day, I'm starving for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to do some fast because the guru said it's good for me. I'm right. going to eat food because I'm going to recover. And you're going to chew and eat it mindfully. That's yeah. important too, not just eating on the way to work. You know, you want to make sure right. that you're really focusing on what you're eating. It's a big deal for how it's absorbed, wouldn't you yeah. agree? Yeah, it's a big deal. So, you know, I hope we, I know we kind of rambled and went all over the place. I hope there were some nuggets here for you guys. Uh, 
We would love to answer any questions that you do have. So if you're still watching or listening in iTunes, I really appreciate that. And we'll, we'll uh, if you're listening in iTunes, you can watch this over on YouTube at High Intensity Health on our YouTube channel. Please post a comment below this uh, video if you have any questions. Some of the studies in the Weight Loss Masterclass that we're launching is going to be available in the description below this video as well. And as always, Dr. Dan, I really appreciate all your insight, your great questions, your good dialogue, and your different perspective. You added a lot of unique perspectives, and I like that you were able to admit on air, you know, to the world of some of the mistakes. That, I mean, we all make mistakes, right? But, mm -hmm. but like, you know, your bias at, at one point in your life and just hammering the cardio. And now you're realizing that, well, that wasn't so good. And so it's cool right. that you admitted that. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. And, you know, also, too, for any free recipes that you may want, we do a lot of free recipes on our Instagrams, Real Food Lab, mm -hmm. at Real Food Lab, and Metabolic Mike. So we show kind of our everyday, what we eat and how to make it. And now that they have the IG stories, which is kind of neat, we I've been doing that a lot more. And yeah kind of taking through you through step by step on um, you know, how to make certain homemade dressings and um, very simple recipes that are super healthy and nutritious, nutrient right. dense. So. Right, because we're not being paid to be fitness models. Like we're real people no, that work out do, yeah. to optimize our health. So if you want to learn practical ways to just make a quick 15 minute meal, check us on Instagram. And also in the high intensity health member side, we do have a, a member portal where we give you more in depth details and tutorials in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. as always, I'm grateful. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Look forward to catching you on the next episode and have a happy, healthy day.